So the next definition we're going to talk about is Article 100, ground fault circuit interrupter, comma, special purpose. So special purpose GFCI or SPGFCI. This is a new type of ground fault protection that has been added to the 2023. All right, now if you go back to Article 100 and you read the definition of a GFCI, a ground fault circuit interrupter, you're going to find that it's a device that opens when the ground fault current exceeds 6 milliamps but does not open when it's less than 4 milliamps. And it actually, the definition says that it opens at class A values. And the informational note tells us that class A means it opens after 6, does not open before 4. So 4 to 6 milliamps, somewhere in that window is where a GFCI operates. That's a class A device. Historically, that's what we've been talking about in the NEC is a class A device. The, the devices in your house, in your place of business, those are all class A GFCI devices. All right. Now, the problem with a class A device is just like anything else, it, it has limits as to its ratings. A class A device is only for circuits up to 150 volts to ground and up to currents of 60 amps. So what if you have a circuit that exceeds those voltage values but you still want the extra protection against ground faults. Take a swimming pool motor for example. Uh, I don't know about you but I would not want to swim in a swimming pool that is not protected by a GFCI, right? 120 volt, 208, 240 volt swimming pool motor. What if the motor was 480? Well, we didn't really have a device to protect against 480 volts so that meant that you didn't have to have any special sort of protection. Just the regular old circuit breaker or fuse is all that you needed for a 480 volt swimming pool motor. Now again, uh, that's not something that I would want to swim in. I want that extra protection when I'm completely submerged in, in water and have no resistance to electric shock. So, Class A GFCI devices have been around since the very beginning of the NEC, well, since, since their invention, right back in 1968. There was also a Class B GFCI device that was only for underwater swimming pool luminaires, and that was only around for three years, just long enough to show people uh, the need for GFCIs and to prove the proof of concept, right, to prove that they would work and prevent, elect uh, prevent shocks from becoming fatal electric shocks. So, a Class B GFCI device has not been around for over 50 years. Forget a Class B. You're not going to find one. If you do, it's probably going to be in a museum somewhere. Class A device is what we've been using for 50 years, and that's all we've been using for 50 years. Well, what if I want that protection, but again, I exceed the values for Class A? Well, now we have Class C, D, and E ground fault circuit interrupters. And we're going to call those special purpose GFCIs. So I kind of wrote this little flow chart here. Let's look at, the def look at the definition first. A special purpose GFCI is a device for circuits exceeding 150 volts to ground that protects people by de-energizing the circuit when a ground fault exceeding the values of a class C, D, or E device occurs. Okay, so let's look at this little flow chart here. If I have a swimming pool motor, for example, does the circuit exceed 150 volts to ground? If not, then you use a Class A GFCI. You got 122.08, 122.40, and you're using a regular Class A GFCI. But what if the circuit does exceed 150 volts to ground? Well, here in the States, that would mean I'm either using 277.480, or a Y-connected system, or a 480 volt delta. Now, for a 277.480 volt Y, the voltage to ground is 277. For a 480 volt delta, the voltage to ground is 480. All right, so does the circuit exceed 300 volts to ground? Well, mine's 277, 480, so the answer is no. Cool, I would use a class C device. So for 277, 480, I'm going to use class C. Does the circuit exceed 300 volts to ground? Yes, it's a 480 volt delta. Or maybe I'm in Canada or close to it, and I'm using a 347-600Y. So if that's the case, then I would go over here to yes. And then there's another question we have to answer, and that is, do I have an oversized equipment grounding conductor? I'm not going to get into that. If you're really that interested, uh, I would tell you to read UL 943C, as in Charlie, and that tells you about the oversized equipment ground. Uh, if you do have one, then you use a Class D. If you don't, then you use a Class E. And all of this really has to do, you know, we, we set these at currents, right? 4 to 6 milliamps for Class A, 
20 milliamps for class C, D, and E. But really, when it comes to electric shock, what, what makes a, an electric shock a fatal one? Well, it's the amount of current, and it's the frequency of the circuit, 60 hertz and 10,000 hertz are, are, are going to hurt differently. And then, most importantly, it's the duration of the electric shock. Think about this. A GFCI does not limit how much current goes through your body. It limits how long that current is going through your body. All right. It opens at 4 to 6 milliamps. But you can get a 30 milliamp your shock for a very short duration of time. Same thing with a class C, D, or E. So we just say, listen, for class C, D, or E, don't trip, don't open if the ground fault current is less than 20 milliamps. Because here's the thing, with higher voltages comes higher leakage current. When you have a 600 volt conductor and you put 120 volts on it versus 480 volts, you're, you're affecting the dielectric strength, you're, you're stressing the dielectric strength of that conductor insulation. You're going to have more leakage current with higher voltages. When I put 480 volts on a circuit, you will get 6 milliamps of leakage current, whether you like it or not. And you're not going to be able to make a regular GFCI work on a 480 volt circuit because it's just going to trip, right? And we would call it, oh, that's nuisance tripping. Well, it's kind of the GFCI doing what it's supposed to do, right? <laughs> but it's not allowing the circuit to function. So we want the swimming pool motor to actually turn on so we can't put it on a class A device for 480. Right? We want it to actually function, but we also want that increased safety that a ground fault circuit interrupter provides. So that's the new definition of a special purpose GFCI. Now, when we start looking at shock, uh, shock thresholds, this is the actual research done by Dr. Charles D.L. back in the 50s. And Dr. Charles D.L. was the inventor of the GFCI. Uh, it's kind of weird to say his name. It looks like you want to say Dalziel, but it's Charles D.L. He invented the GFCI, and he was a, a professor of electrical engineering at UC Cal Berkeley. So he had a lot of volunteers that he could test on, right? His students, like, hey, Mr. Jones, looks like you have a C plus. You want an A? Help me after school with my research, right? <laughs> so he figured out all of this stuff about electric shock, and we still use his research today in UL 943. So Dr. DL figured out, okay, at what point do shocks become painful? At what point can people not let go of an electric shock? At what point do they go into respiratory paralysis? You know, and then we did some estimations <laughs> on at which point they die, right? He didn't actually kill anybody, uh, or at least if he did, he didn't document it. So there you go. Um, at four to six milliamps, this is the uh, let go threshold. At four to six milliamps, at four milliamps, 99.5% of kids can let go at four milliamps. Now, I want to, I want you to put your eyes up here where it says estimate. Okay, he didn't actually shock any children, but these were the estimates. Okay, now he did, he did shock women and men, but uh, when it comes to kids, these are estimates. We estimate that 99.5% of children can let go at four milliamps. 95% can let go at six milliamps. Now, at six milliamps, the high end of a GFCI. 99.5% of women can let go at 6 milliamps, and 100% can let go at 4. When it comes to men, if we go over here to 8 milliamps, 100% can let go at 8 milliamps. 99.5% can let go at 9 milliamps. All right, so when we look at 20 milliamps, well, Pretty much everybody is locked up by the time you get to 20 milliamps. Uh, looks like 1% mm, of men can actually let go once we, or I'm sorry, 20 milliamps, 5% of men can let go. 100% of women, 100% of children, they're locked up by the time you get 20 milliamps. So 20 milliamps is a high number. But again, we're not limiting how much current can flow through you. We're limiting how, how long you're exposed to that shock. Now, I want to open up NFPA Link. And if you don't have NFPA Link, look, I'm not trying to sell you a product. I don't care if you buy NFPA Link. I don't work for NFPA. But boy, my life would not be the same without it. And I'm just being serious. I, I have to have NFPA Link. So here I'm going to open the 2023 NEC. I want, you, I want to show you how easy it is to search with uh, NFPA Link. I'm going to search for SP 
GFCI, special purpose GFCI. Where are the requirements for SP GFCI? Let me go ahead and uh, bring that over. Well, as you can see, almost all of it is swimming pools, all right? We're not requiring SP GFCI throughout the house or, you know, <laughs> not going to have 480 in your house. Uh, we're not requiring it in, for receptacles in bathrooms, all right? We're not requiring it for receptacles outside. These are very limited applications where you have to have SP GFCI. Look here, Article 680 is what? Swimming pools. So 680.32, swimming pools. 680 swimming pools 680 swimming pools 680 swimming pools oh here we have 410.184 guess what that is that is for uh horticultural for for luminaires in horticultural areas so if i have indoor plant growing like you might have at lowe's or home depot or in your bedroom closet depending on what you grow you're probably going to be spraying water on your plants stands to reason that if you have 480 volt lighting or 277 volt lighting, you're going to want to have SP GFCI. Where else do you see it? Well, Article 100, where we are. 680, 680, 680, 680, right? So this is mainly used around swimming pools, at least for right now. So I think it's going to be interesting to see where it evolves. Are we going to use more SP GFCIs in the future? Probably. That seems to be the trend. Now, I also want to point out an SPGFCI is not something that goes in an outlet box or goes in your panel board. It, it's, it's a device, okay? You put in an SPGFCI, you're putting in, it, it's a box that you hang on the wall, okay? So you can get them, but you're not going to find them at Lowe's and Home Depot. <laughs> you're not going to find them at Walmart, okay? These things are, these are big pieces of equipment, but we don't require them often. Right, so there you go. Article 100, Special Purpose GFCI.